Hi everyone, welcome to the Miller Life Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to be pressure canning some teriyaki chicken. I use chicken thighs for this recipe. I did get this recipe from the book from Angie Schneider and it's called Pressure Canning for Beginners and Beyond. This is the teriyaki chicken recipe. I did change it a slight bit. I will be listing the recipe in the subscription box. So if you don't catch all the stuff, you can just go there for the complete recipe. Right now I'm cutting up my chicken and I'm not really removing a lot of the fat, just the areas that have a large amount of skin or leftover fat. And they are chicken thighs. I am using approximately, the recipe calls for five pounds. I think this was six. So I did do a jar of just uh, chicken with some salt and water. And we'll see that later. You'll also notice while I'm uh, cutting up this chicken, I'm doing about one inch-ish blocks, cubes. And also the it's a little bit frozen yet, which actually I find makes it a smidge easier to cut it up. I'm gonna finish cutting this up and we will be back. Once all my chicken's cut up, now I'm gonna be mixing in all the ingredients into a pan, and you're gonna be heating this up to a gentle boil for five minutes. We're going to be adding one cup of soy sauce, one quarter cup of rice vinegar, four teaspoons of toasted sesame seed oil, six tablespoons of honey, this is raw honey that I get from a local beekeeper here in the Lehigh Valley. Now my dry ingredients are two thirds cup of brown sugar, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of dried ground ginger, and two teaspoons of non-iodized salt. That's really important when you're canning that you do not use iodized salt. I'm gonna give it a stir, and I do have a whisk that I'm gonna get my honey off, and then I'm gonna whisk it together pretty well, and then I'm gonna begin he heating it up. One of the uh, wet ingredients that I forgot to mention was, it does call for mirin, but I did not have that so in place of mirin, you can use wine. So I did use a Pinot Grigio wine in place of the mirin, and that was six uh, tablespoons of wine. Once you have it to a gentle boil, then you will be adding your chicken for five minutes and bring that back up to a gentle boil as well for five minutes. Now, when we get to the packing the jars part, the recipe calls for three quarts, or I believe it was six pints. I was, what I ended up doing was three pint and a half and one quart. And I, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna try to divide up this mixture between all of the jars. So you'll find that I'm not doing it as methodically as you usually do when you're doing um, jar filling because I wanted to make sure that I had enough product in each one of them. So you'll see here I have the three pint and a half and one quart, and I know that it'll fill those. Um, but you'll see, as I said, it's not gonna be as methodical. I always put a bowl underneath and paper towels so I don't make a big giant mess, and um, I just think it's cleaner doing that. Just something that I like to do catches any drips because I get drippy. All right, I'm getting my jars going. I'm gonna put my funnel on there. This is very sticky, has a lot of sticky ingredients in it, so I'm gonna to try to be very, very careful about always having my funnel on, but let's see how that goes. <laughs> You can see a little bit on this that um, it is warm. You kind of, you didn't really cook the chicken, but you did warm it up. Um, I think the point of that was to make it that um, you're hot packing, basically. 
in this premise. Uh, once we get these jars going, which is going to take a little bit of finagling, because like I said, I want to make sure I have enough in each of my jars. And then anything that doesn't have enough liquid at the end, I do have a kettle heating. You can top it off with water to get to your one and a quarter inch headspace. P.S. I see that you can see that my paper towel is hitting my little burner that I use to heat up everything. I do have this turned off at this point. So if your Zen is going to get a little messed up by seeing that, don't worry. My kitchen did not catch on fire at any point making this video for you. <laughs> What I'm really trying to do here is get most of the chicken distributed evenly between my jars. And then I'm going to worry about putting in the broth at the end. I will bring you back when I have these all packed up. I have my chicken and broth all distributed more evenly between my jars. Now it's time to debubble. We're going to be doing one and a quarter inch headspace. If I need any more liquid in my jar to get to that point, I will top it off with hot water. Now I'm going to be wiping my rims really well to get any of the substances off of my rim. And I also kind of do the threads a little bit too. Just want to make sure this very sticky uh, liquid is not going to hinder my jar from sealing. I'm going to put my lid on and then we are going to put the ring on. Fingertip tight. Uh, you don't want to crank it down too badly or too tight because what happens is you get buckling. Is my leftover chicken because I did have approximately a pound extra than the recipe called for so I am just doing a raw pack with some salt kosher salt and then I put in hot liquid I didn't put much liquid in, just a little bit on the, just to top it off. And I did not pack this really, really, really tightly. That's why I added some liquid. I, it all came out fine. Headspace was perfect. And I had another jar of chicken. I'm trying to get my chickens all in a row. Instead of the ducks in a row, I've got chickens in my row. It's getting expensive and there's a lot of stuff happening with chicken right now. So I'm getting it in my jars now. Once you have all your jars in the canner, um, I put a little vinegar in my water because I definitely was concerned if there was any siphoning that I was going to have a really sticky mess if that happened. And I just thought that that would help keep my jars a little bit easier to clean if that should happen. You do get siphoning sometimes no matter what you do. So I kind of plan ahead. And if it doesn't happen, excellent. And if it does, I'm not as hard to clean up. We are venting now. This is going to be 10 minutes of venting. You want to get evacuate all of the air and create a steam inside your canner. 
and that's what the 10 minute vent is doing. It's getting all of the sputtering and any air out of your canner. Once you get up to pressure, after you put your weight on, you are going to be doing 90 minutes. At least that's what I did because I did use quart as my largest size jar. So it was 90 minutes of timing. These jars smelled so good while they were cooking. It, the whole time I was making it, it smelled so great. I cannot wait to open one up and I will bring you along when I do that. It's exciting. I've got some more chicken on my shelf with some you know, flavoring. I do a lot of ingredient canning, but I've been doing a little bit of uh, recipes too. So it's a nice combination to have in my pantry. Thank you for coming along today. If you like what you saw today, hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. I will see you next time at the Miller Life Kitchen. Thank you.